know you look at yourself with the lash and it seems like your eye go more in? Yeah. Okay, that's how I feel. Hey, 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 we back with it. We back with it. Do we back with it. The only thing I can think of is I got it. Oh, wait, wait. Hey, hey. It's time to cash now. What? What? I have an emergency and I need cash now. Call JG. Hey, hey, hey. It's time to cash now. T, 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 Call T. Now. Yeah, that was legit. They should put us on that commercial. Uh, JG Wentworth, 877 cash now. Because at your next event, that was like legit. That was a little remix yeah. on it. And you know, those commercials pop. They made yeah. It's a commercial that you like think about later because the song is pretty catchy. So right. we just need to cut for that part that we just did. Hi. Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome back. We're so excited. As you as you can tell, um, we're about to go eat after this. So <laughs> we, always about we, to go we eat. are always about to go eat. Every... Every, because that's the thing to do every weekend, you know, every weekend we push brunch. Today we're not even doing brunch. Look at us. We're doing drinks. Drink. <laughs> we're doing drunch. <laughs> <laughs> we're about to get drunk at lunch. Um, so we just want to check in with you guys. Um, and we came, you know, don't we look cute? We got these shirts at Lane, Lane Bryant. Bryant. Do you want to um, say $20 with a credit card? You I do have a credit card, today. so they got me. They did get you. They won't get um, me with their credit card. They can keep that. But these shirts, aren't they the cutest? Okay. Catch the glow. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Ding. <laughs> Bing. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, we were so excited to wear these shirts. We wanted to wear them last weekend, but Texas decided to cold. be a little nasty. Uh, so we're really excited to wear these today and look cute. Like sisters together out gallivanting upon the world, um, getting drunk. Mm, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that, that is a thing. That's the thing. How Drunch, brunch, week was great. Um, Cardi B came out with her new CD. Right, for all my nasty hoes. Cardi and B we've been you. bumping. I um I play it all the time. <laughs> that has been the new biggest thing mm -hmm. this week. Yeah. Is and then Drake um dropped nice for what? So nice for what? If y'all Drake, all that's, the Instagram captions are gonna be nice to these niggas for what? Yeah, all summer 2018, all year 2018. That that song is popping too. Yeah, I like up. that song. And then Nicki Minaj's two songs. I am. I am a big Nicki Minaj fan. I've been a Nicki Minaj fan for forever. Um, but I like Cardi B too. I like everybody. Like, if you rap, because I like rap and it sounds good, then I'm playing it. I'm not a big Nicki Minaj fan. I haven't listened to her music since the Itty Bitty song. Oh, yeah, because that was more like savage, gutter, yeah. underground kind of music. Um, I, can't, yeah. I just can't get down with all the voices and shit that she be doing. Like that. All the, I mean, yeah, yeah. like she just, yeah, that's like be going to different personalities. I like it. I don't but I do listen to uh, Chloe and Hallie. Do you know who they are? Oh, um, the two sisters. Yes, yes their album so, is. Is good. it popping? Oh yeah. When we get in the car, I'll let you listen to one of their yeah. songs that I jam every day. Um, good deal. Good deal. And you know, I like kind of like contemporary type of music, and it gives me that kind of contemporary kind of hood girl. You can definitely tell like they are Beyonce's artists because the gotcha. sound is there. Is and the, is one her. of them sounds really a lot like her. So uh, their album was really good. Really good. Um, they released it a couple weeks ago. You know, I appreciate a good song. A good song. A good song. Like when you get in the car and you play it 24 7. Mm -hmm. Oh, Drake's God, God's Plan. Mm -hmm. That That is the supreme of my song. Of the song. Gets you in the mood. Mm hmm. Um, you to me, that's big in heads. Even if I just hear four oh. my nasty hoes, that's really from the across the globe. Yeah, that's all I'm trying to hear. Hey, and it is just it puts you in a, a different state of mind. Then nice yeah. for what does that to oh, me yeah. too? I just like listening. Like for you all just my... want to to just curse everyone out there. Like yeah. blocks the intersection and you feel okay. You feel empowered. Mm -hmm. You could change the I just, world. I like to hear for all my nasty hoes and then walk into work. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. <laughs> yeah, because I listen to rap before work. Mm -hmm. Oh, I listen to rap. I at listen work. to rap 24. Yeah, at work, yeah. after work. Mm -hmm. Nathan in the car. In it. Mm -hmm. On my way to church. Probably not to church. I don't really probably. listen. I don't listen. I listen to gospel music. <laughs> 
Okay. Why is that? Like, God don't hear your music all the time. Because I do that too. When you go to church, it's like, let me put on some Jesus music. Right. But when then he know what you time, listen to. Yeah. And then any yeah, other time. Be real. For my nasty hoes. So it's, it's like, but let me put on rap gospel. Right. Yeah. Right. You, you gotta. But then after church, you put. You put, the, you put on the, the nasty hoes. Right. Right. Why but he, but he knows. He knows. Uh, He's, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you want to introduce our topic? This yes, this week we will be getting a little into parentships. You know what that means? Relationships that you have with your parents mm -hmm. at our age. When you old, uh, my back pain, <laughs> my leg pain. You know, when you get to this age in your oh. 20s. This age in your 20s. <laughs> but just as a 20-year-old something in mm -hmm. general, we have had a fascination with kind of talking about how relationships change as you get older. And we think the relationships with your parents, oh, Lord, girl, because yeah. they be worried, mm -hmm. girl, they work your nerves. They, they work. Just, what we going to do with the parents? What we going to do with them? And then you talk to your parent and you just be on the phone like, what is happening? Where did you, where, how did you get there? Where did like, we come where, from? I'm over, I'm here. You're here. Right. How did, where, where? Right, and then we have this thing going on yeah. with you there and me here. Yeah, so, and parents are funny. <laughs> and you don't realize until you get older, like into our age, when you kind of just see your per see your parent as a human, like mm -hmm. as their own individual person. And I think that kind of challenges something in you and in your parents because your relationship has changed because you're not a kid anymore. And then your parents believe it or not, like, you know, you're like, oh, I'm not a kid. You always be my kid, and so it's just in the gooch of what is happening the, right. with our relationship. The little gray area, it just, you yeah. just like, kind of okay. have to balance who you are as an adult, who I am as your parent, and, and what that means for us moving mm -hmm. forward, and kind of like how it changes your communication style and your dynamic. Even though that's your parent, but you are now in your 20s. So I'm like, you making your own decisions. You can wall the bill. Ain't nobody checking for you. Ain't nobody checking you. Who, 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 who and who, 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 um, who. and so <laughs> I thought we was going. I thought we was I lock thought, it up. See, I thought we was you going. thought we was about to fall the nasty hoes. You yeah. were about to get there. <laughs> Whoa, shaking back. I was ready. It's not, it's not dance break yet. Okay, okay. <laughs> After okay. like a couple tips, then okay. we break it down. Okay. <laughs> So we have tips. These are things that in general, we are talking about the general 20 year old somethings with your parents. And this is for the parents too, because you kind of want to know how your kid feels, how, right? what they're thinking. Um, because I'm sure it's, I'm not a parent, um, but I'm you sure know. it's just as difficult for the parent for the relationship to shift yeah. when they pretty much have been the, the end all, person. yeah, the yeah. end all be all for all decisions that you make, right. and then one day they're just not. They're just not, and it's like, oh, well, you didn't ask me, and it's like, oh, mom, I didn't have to ask you. Or like, you know, it's like three a.m. and you like going out, and like you, you can't ask your kid like where they're going. I mean, you if can. If you don't live at home, you can't ask. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you live at your mom's house, you better tell her where you're going. Right. She <laughs> Stop. <laughs> you better check in. Yes. But, um, yeah, so, like, no one is asking you what you're doing, what you're spending your money on. Your mom or dad may have both. They have questions. And you don't feel like you really should tell them certain right. things because... We're not friends. Right. Right. Like, your parents first. Well, to us, your parents yeah. first. I'm sure to yourself, you're not a parent first. <laughs> Sure That's how you selfish first. kids are. It's like, oh, you're my mom, and then you yourself to you, whenever you want to be. <laughs> after, <laughs> after you mom. let me hold ten dollars, right? So this gets we got five. We got five tips. And you know we gotta write them down. But the, oh, we got four tips. Yes, we have to write them down because we, we think a lot. Is that the same yeah. as thinking a lot? Spitballing. We think a lot. Then like, spitball to pew, each pew. other. Mm -hmm. pew, pew, pew. The ideas, and we pretty much have the convers like the conversation with each other before we come right, on right. and have it with you guys, and then just from the conversation we pull. What we do? Pull. There you go. Pull um, it. Some tips out that we feel like are it's helpful. Yeah, and things that have helped us. So tip number one: 
realize your parents are not your friends. They, Say they're not your friends. Um, the relationship changes and it's kind of like, oh, I'm taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my mom's just checking in. I'm not calling her because I need anything. I'm really calling right. just to check on her, um, which is cool. You should have some level of copacetic-ness. I don't know. Some, some level yeah. of, like, communication. Right. You and know. some level of some level of friendship with you know with your parents once you are to the level that you take care of yourself but always realize that your parent is always your parent it's always your parent and and that boundary never goes away and mm -hmm. you do get really comfortable as you get older because mm -hmm. You know, now you're an adult and your mom's an adult and you can have certain conversations that, of right. course, you can't have when you're 16, 15, 12, whatever. But then realizing <clears throat> that's it. Yeah. Like the first time you cuss, at your, cuss around your parents and it's like, shit. And they look at you and it's like, you look What's at them that? and they look at you. What's that? And you look at them and they just say, all right now. Right. <laughs> That's what the that's what they especially black parents. I mean, I've never had a say, white parent, so I don't know what they would say. Right, but right. Black but parents. Ours is, all right, now you're getting too big for you your britches. Oh, you're smelling yourself. Yeah, yeah, you're slip hanging. So yeah, so you definitely test the waters mm -hmm. and kind of see how far you can go with that person. But just remember, your parents are your parents. They have a certain amount of respect that no one else will have because. They're the birth givers. The birth givers. They, they the give us. They give it the birth. Yeah. Um. And so, just I mean, really, you you did a really good job with them. Did I? Like you ain't you don't even have anything else no, to say because it was, was just like add, I don't know what to say. Yeah. Right. But um, you know, setting that boundary and respecting that boundary of this is always my parent. Yes. Once you get older, the relationship is more fluid. It's not necessarily a you you say it and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, there can be more conversation, but I think that is really the extent of it. More conversation. That's it. Um, and then you get to choose how the conversation goes, right. what you choose to discuss, but right. they're, they're not your friend. They're not your um, friend. Like y'all, y'all can be close, but you're still mm -hmm. close as parent and child. Yeah. That's it. And you, you know, you would want to be closer as you get older, but close, you know, and a lot of people say like, Oh my blah, blah, blah is my best friend. Um, just to an extent, because right. you, I know you're not telling your parent every single thing that you tell your best friend, you know, like, right. so because they are your parent, because they're your parent. Yeah. Okay. So number two, let your parents grow up. Do you want to, you want to let me hit it? Yeah, you hit it. Okay. So last week we talked about moving out of your mama's house. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, it's for everybody who's still living at their mama's house. Trust mm -hmm. me. She does not want you there mm -hmm. to um, reiterate. She does not want you there. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to leave and let your parents grow up. You are not, of course, while you're, you know, you're born, you're growing up, you are your parents' own responsibility. Right. But once you're old enough to take care of yourself, your parents have a whole life that they are trying to live and you need to leave. Mm -hmm. You need to, you know, live your own and don't expect your parents to save you all the time. Amen. Um, that's not their job. Their job right. is to raise you into a respectable person contributed member of society right not an asshole and then not an asshole after that it's kind of it's up kind to, you. to you right you know they can be there to guide you i think when we talked earlier you said just a right just to guide you along the path because yeah. they have certain experiences that they right. can now now you're ready to receive it now i'll give it to you right. as your parent who is now guiding you in life they're not there to parent you in the same sense that they did when you were nine mm -hmm. you know like you're 23 24 25 you know probably doing your own little thing got your mm -hmm. own little shiny own little pad got a, a man some friends whatever so they're not really having those kid like conversations with mm -hmm. you so and they don't want to be the person that bails you out all the time i think the expectation is that and again i don't have kids but i think the expectation is that you raise a kid to be a self-sufficient independent person if they fall down if they make a mistake right they, they then learn they can come from to it you. Right. right and i was talking to my aunt today and she was saying you know you know, my co younger cousins are about to go to school. And it's like, you know, he's going to make mistakes. If there are things he can't talk to me about, he has cousins, he has yes, friends, he has yes. family. Um, so you can't depend on your parents to always bail right. you out or to always be that safety net, whether it's money, you know, just whatever. It could be anything. Your parents, let them grow up. You grown. Let, let them, them live their life and let them rediscover who they are right. not having you take all of their attention. 
Stop being selfish. Like parenting is a very small window in your life and in their life, especially if they're married. Like their marriage, it, it lasts longer than the parenting phase of the child and, and parentship. So just let them be who they want to be and you go live your life. And when you have issues, then you come back, get advice, you know, re-energize. But it's, it's, it just gets to a point you just stop depending on them for so many things because then they cannot live their life that they want to live right and you know once you turn really once you turn about 14 the parenting phase is kind of over because you are who you gonna be well so. then they just survive in the teenage phase they <laughs> just like, put their comeback uh, gear on and they're like you ready betty <laughs> she slammed the door when she came in i don't know what we're gonna do slam that goddamn door again <laughs> you don't pay oh, no just, bills around uh, wait here. if you pay a bill slam the door <laughs> I can't wait to do so that. So that's why, like, after 14, that, there's not much to parent because it's just survival because we feeling each other out because mm -hmm. I know you in your hormone stage. I'm trying to let you grow. But if you do that again, I'm going to beat your ass. I'm going to beat you. Right. And you just pull up to the back and it's like, I'm going to beat you. <laughs> yeah, so. I just mouth it from across the room. That's it. So, uh, so if, if we were just saying like at 14, it kind of like it trickles stops. off in the teenage stage. We just trying to figure each other out. And that's really when the first kind of <clears throat> transition in, in your relationship occurs. Most teenagers, you know, get into it with one parent or the other. They're just not seeing eye to eye. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. once you reach that mid 20s, it's again, just that kind of transition because, you know, when you turn 16, it's like, oh, I think I know everything. You don't know anything, right. anything but I'm still living in your house. Then you go to college and it's still mm -hmm. like, mm, you pay for all my stuff. <laughs> like I'm still sort of dependent on you. But, but then not. when you get to our age, yeah. it's all you and all of that stuff that your parents did, you appreciate it yeah. <laughs> in a different way that you just didn't see then. So that leads us into um, honor thy mother and father. Can I take it? You I'm, I'm just I'm gonna, gonna say a little snippet. Cause you know I have. Uh, so this is first. just in in general what this looks like for you, and not to be like so biblical, but I, I obviously it's in the Bible, and a lot of people use that as like this justification. Like you write it on a piece of duct tape and you just stick it on stuff. Like honor thy mother and thy father, honor thy mother and thy father, and that looks different for different people. Um, of course, you want a healthy relationship with your parents. And sometimes if that is hard to achieve, you honor your mother and your father in different ways. And even if you do have that relationship with them, you know, you just honor them the way you feel on the inside is good with your soul and like your morals and beliefs and stuff. It doesn't mean that you're like at the beck and call of them, that you, you know, take their inappropriate conversations or inappropriate words or negative energy they bring to your life because your parents are still people and that's still a relationship and you still have to treat it like you would any other relationship and you want your relationships to be positive. So... Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's my spiel. I think it just gets that. taken out of context to me. You are in my beck and call. You do what I tell you to do because, you know, now you're your own person. You have your own thoughts, your own ideas. And right. when you don't do, you know, what, what I, I raised you, you to do or what right. I want you to do, then, you know. It becomes an issue. It becomes an issue. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, honoring your mother and father is really, like she said, what you feel is right within yourself. Everybody has right. an innate knowledge of right and wrong. And right. you know, you know, cussing out your mom, cussing out your dad is not. Not the way to go. Not the way to go. But. But if you have a relationship with your parent that's toxic and you just choose not to talk to them or you choose to be, um, you know, set boundaries and have mm -hmm. a structured type of relationship, have those conversations where it's like, mm, we're not going to talk about that. You know, that is honoring your mother and father, right. not getting out of your character. Um, and not know. disrespecting them, like not cussing them out, not calling them out their name. Um, and then silence is an answer. Like silence right. is okay. And so sometimes when you have to be silent, it's just choosing you not to, choosing for you not to engage, thus choosing to honor your mother and father. Because, you know, if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing at all. And sometimes, you know, nobody can push you like your parent can push you. Yeah. Because they know you and they say that one thing that makes that you just under your, your neck real yeah. fast. What you do? Oh, don't hear Because them. you hear it and it, they just. It's a trigger. It's like. 
And your parents know your triggers. Like, we're talking about the first right. social institution you were ever introduced were your parents or parent. Someone like a parent. So, whoever you look at as a parent, that's the, those are the first people that you are around. So, they know you... Mm -hmm. in, a, in a few little ways that other people don't know you and vice versa because once you get older and you change your parents you know kind of like who are you right. or I didn't raise you to blah 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 mm -hmm. and it's like yes because I'm now my own person because I'm now my own person and I do make my own decisions thank you thank you very very much <laughs> um but yeah I think I mean honor your mother and father again just what it looks like to you mm -hmm. and you know if you're doing the work on yourself you have a toxic relationship with your parent and you're doing the work on yourself to make sure that your communications between you and them is better each time you mm -hmm. are honoring them because right. you could snap back clap back at every conversation so you know if you see that growth in yourself and it's like you know what whatever she says it, you know if it goes let less, it go okay be like Elsa yeah just Okay, or don't Move respond, on. or just you know change whatever whatever your right. thing is to make sure that it gets back on path and you don't fly right. off the handle. Right, that is honoring your parents because you're doing the work of you know just doing being the work. cordial doing the work. and having. They not just being they gonna still pick at you. Be right. If your mama know it bothers you to call you biscuit head, and she call you biscuit head. Like she ain't trying to stop. You have to do the work to not be offended by biscuit head. <laughs> she gonna keep calling you that. <laughs> That's a good I had nothing else to say. That is a good example. <laughs> Biscuit. And you just cringe. And you, you just say. cringe, but you just like let it go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like my mom still calls me poo. Oh, wow. And I now, know. right, but it was at one point mm -hmm. I hate in the grocery store, you want to be called poo? <laughs> when you two hours over, poo! <laughs> and you're like 17. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. I. Embarrassment. So now when she says it, I just embrace it. Like I just love it because mm -hmm. what you, what I'm gonna tell her? Like call me Paulisha. How's it gonna go? That's not gonna be so good. All right, Miss Woody. <laughs> yeah. All right now. Okay. So our last and final tip is your parents are not superheroes. Mm -hmm. They make mistakes. Believe it or not, <laughs> your parents are not perfect. And I know at some point in your life, you think that they are mm -hmm. perfect because it's just it's just development. I mean, it's just certain parts that you're just not supposed to see because you're just mm -hmm. not meant to see it at that moment. And they're not superheroes. Like, they make mistakes. Um, they late to work sometimes. And they can't blame you anymore because they don't drop you off at school anymore. But, um... <laughs> They, you know, like they, they have flaws and deficits just like everyone else. And I know a lot of times we are easy to like judge or spout off because of who our parents have been to us in the past without realizing that they were human before they even became parents. And it's really hard to be a parent. Like we're not parents uh, because it looks hard <laughs> to do. Like, it looks like a skill set that I'm not equipped with. Not equipped with. And like they don't do trainings or seminars no or class. anything. Right. Um, and if I had a, like a kid that was just like me, Lord Jesus, help me. Help us. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yes, because they is. dropped off at your house. Oh. Uh, we have, a, a, and and we have a child allergy over here. Oh, I can get you some we Benadryl. <laughs> that we can give to the kids so they go to sleep? To you so oh, you can keep I think that would be the problem. I would try to give Benadryl to the kid. Don't bring your kids over here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so just realizing that you're kind of discovering a part of them that you've never been allowed to see. Because parents put a lot of pressure on themselves to make sure their kids are happy. Make sure their kids have everything. So there are certain parts... You know, that your mama, daddy, or whoever a parent is to you that they do. And it's like, wow, that is annoying. Like, <laughs> but you never realize it until now. Mm -hmm. And then you're a parent. And it's like, you get on my nerves sometimes. Um, and, but it's just at that point, that's what a relationship is. Because believe it or not, you got on your parents' nerves. Hmm. Isn't that weird? I don't think I did. But I can see how other... Right. You look so. You look blessed. You look so good. Uh, I don't other people would have that problem. Why did you like look me up and down? Oh, it wasn't. Oh. I mean, if you felt, if you feel, I didn't feel pressure, anything. That's why I'm asking for clarification. Oh, clarity. I wasn't indicating, but if you feel, 
<laughs> that I, right, I right. support. Right, right. That's right. She's just mad because I ate her fish nuggets earlier. But um, so that's all that we have. Twelve. <laughs> Twelve. So, of course, whatever um, little secrets and annoying things that you've discovered about your parents. And parents, whatever you've discovered about, like, the 20-something-year-old that's kind of like, you know what? I don't think I asked for that part mm -hmm. of the kid. Like, if we could take that out, it's like, ooh, that's your daddy side. That's what they do. Oh, yeah. That's somebody else's side. side. Right. You didn't get that from me. You didn't get that, <laughs> you didn't get that from me. That's for being around them people. <laughs> So and they just say your last name because you had a daddy last name. Mm -hmm, that's from being around in Woody. So I don't know where you, <laughs> I don't know Woody. Where you didn't got that from. Oh, that's that Marsh Clan over there. I don't know what they do over there. <laughs> <laughs> so we just thought that this was a fun and different topic. I don't think anybody's talking about how their relationship has changed and we've experienced changes with our parentships too. And so we thought it was important that we put it out there. You know, we're just out here struggling to kind of find the new people of who we are and to stay on that track to do, to build a friendship, still have that boundary of parentship, and then you're still able to respect each other as individuals because that is what you are at this point. Right. I'm you're free, parents. You're an individual now. Hi, congratulations. You're not well, so and so's mom or so and so's dad. So and so's mom, so and so's dad. Right. You're just Jill. Angela. Okay. Angela, yeah. How's the Jill? kids, Angela? And you don't even have to And talk it's like, about them. you know, I haven't talked to them. They're at in university. Two weeks. At university. That's it. <laughs> so, welcome to your newfound freedom, parents. And 20 some year olds, stop being so selfish. And that's all I have to say to conclude that. Anything else that you want to add? No, I think. Yeah. I mean, we just want to come in and hit it and quit it real fast. Just hit come in. Um, and just, you know, don't be discouraged if you don't have the ideal parent child relationship. Um, there are a lot of people who don't, a lot of people who are raised by other people. So, parent mm -hmm. can mean anybody mm -hmm. um, who raised you, who instilled those values in you. It doesn't necessarily. And who have to you be, have that respect for. Right. And it doesn't necessarily have to be your mom or your dad. And, you know, if you don't have that ideal relationship, that's okay too. Um, you just work on the relationships that you have with the people who are in your life, who are in those roles right. um, for you. And then do the work on yourself as far as whatever issues you have. Um, if y'all don't have that ideal relationship, do the work on yourself because it's only going to help you. Yeah. That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, like, comment, share, share subscribe. subscribe. A little subscription, um, comment. Did I already say comment? Well, I do want you to comment the annoying things because I have like a list of it. And just in case my mama watches this, um, poo! Like, you don't mm. want to be the only one with a list. Right, so if y'all could post y'all's list and then I'll, I'll post my list. Like a little bit because I don't have enough space to list <laughs> So um, As always, you can be happy without everything going your way. We'll see you next week. Bye!